Let's answer the first question. Yes. Demi Moore does dance in only a G-string and looks sensational clothed or otherwise in her new film, Strip Tease, a sort of underworld comedy about a single mom forced to make ends meet by stripping. Oh, yes, Your Honor, I've got a job. I'm working at the Eager Beaver. At age 33, no, Demi please. is the highest paid actress in motion picture history, picking up a cool 12 and a half million for her performance in the upcoming film. And it's becoming a family business. Pumpkin, have you ever seen me dance? Her eldest daughter, Ruma, plays her child in the movie. Have you? Because I told the I girls... I came out tonight. Oh, God. You looked really pretty. No, I didn't. Yeah, you did. You looked great. Little to me was always a bit of a lost soul, but who wouldn't be? Moving every few months, dozens of schools, an alcoholic and unstable mother from whom she's now estranged, a father who skipped town early, and a stepfather who committed suicide. Aside from good genes, Demi got no breaks in this life until she made them herself. She dropped out of high school, made a low-budget monster flick called Parasite, was briefly married to a rocker named Freddie Moore, then got chosen from a field of hundreds for a regular role on TV's General Hospital. Oh, thank God it's not Laura. I don't know how you feel. I am so relieved. For the first time in her life, she had money and fans. She drank too much, abused drugs. She ran with a fast crowd and made a movie about running with a fast crowd. You break my heart. Then again, you break everyone's heart. In St. Elmo's Fire, she was aligned with the much maligned Brat Pack and nearly married one of them, Emilio Estevez. But by 1987, the wild child had totally cleaned up her act and met her match in Bruce Willis. He obviously found the relationship to be a sobering experience, but he stopped drinking, and they quickly married. Conventional wisdom said divorce would soon follow. They have defied the odds, perhaps because their career paths have never crossed, except with the 1991 low-budget picture, Mortal Fox. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He used to be such a happy-go-lucky guy. Hey, I'm happy-go-lucky. I'm very happy-go-lucky. In 1990, Demi stepped out of the pack of pretty co-stars with a teary-eyed standout performance in the blockbuster Ghost. And she has been a star ever since, building a career out of sheer determination and discipline. Some things aren't for sale. Such as? We can't buy people. She is comfortable in an evening gown. A uniform I do know you. or a business suit. You remember all the things we did? I remember. Things nobody knows about you but me. She is also comfortable making others uncomfortable. No, no, Her no, choices no. in disclosure and indecent proposal have shown that taking risks has its rewards, even if it doesn't always pay off, as in last year's widely panned adaptation of The Scarlet Letter. And she is nearly as famous for her magazine covers as her movies. Two Vanity Fair issues featured her naked and fully painted and naked and fully pregnant. Let's give her a round of applause again, please, for Demi Moore. Thank you. She and Bruce have three daughters, which might help explain her passion for dolls. She has almost 1,000 one-of-a-kind dolls. This recent auction, benefiting the American Foundation for AIDS yeah. Research, brought her out on stage, decked out like the prize doll. It fetched $50,000, and to me was a winner either way. The bidder was Bruce Willis. $50,000! Now an international star, Demi recently traveled to India, where she got her hand stained with henna in a traditional wedding pattern. One day later, she's in a strip club in Manhattan, where she'd done extensive research for her role in striptease. There's now a lot riding in this movie, and she knows it. In striptease, you play a mother who has to support her child and has to make money, good money, quickly. Could you imagine, in real life, when you would have had to do that yourself? Certainly, because it, 
when it comes to your children, I don't think that there is anything within reason that you wouldn't do to protect them, to care for them. You don't find it degrading? Um, there is an element where you give something away. And, and I think I would, I would be amiss to not say that. Because I personally did three stage numbers. And when I had to do the last one, and it was the one where I was the most topless, and there was a couple of men at the end of this runway where I could feel were just dying to see my breasts. And there was something about that that made me a little, ugh. Yeah. You can feel that. And it wasn't so much my feelings about my own body or, or the dancing itself. But in that way, I felt that somebody was trying to take something from me. Do you like your body? Um, I mean, I think you've got a great <laughs> body. If you tell me you don't like it. I am more comfortable and feel um, more connected with my body than I ever have. Okay. And a lot of the things that I feel that I've done, in a way, was to help me get over things, uh, get over those inhibitions, those insecurities with my body, mm -hmm. as well as sometimes the photographs that I've done have not been because I think that I have such a beautiful body or that I'm, that I think that I personally have something so much better than anybody else that I need to show it. It's really selfishly as an opportunity to get over these things that I feel are limitations. To me, the feeling is that you keep showing your body, whether it's in photographs or in films, because your body is so gorgeous that you want everyone to know you've got this great body. You're saying it's just the opposite. It's to become comfortable with your body? Mm -hmm. And I don't want to be held back by some kind of negative relationship with my body, because my body and mind are all one. So do you think every woman should stand in front of a mirror and, and, and start to do... Uh... I think that every woman should take a moment in her life and stand in front of, the, front of a mirror and strip for herself at least once. And does she have to know what to do? I think that the only thing you need to know how to do is just to feel what feels good to you. I was in this very club when a young woman by the name of Amanda came directly over to me and she said to me, I just have to tell you one thing about this and one thing only. She said, you have to always dance for yourself. Hmm. Don't ever do it for anybody else. Okay, I have played drums with Ringo Starr for a special. I have uh, ridden on the back of Sylvester Stallone's motorcycle. Show, well, me, definitely gonna show, me, show me what I do. Can you show me here? I think that maybe we should just head up here. Is you all right with that? I don't know. But let's well, go on up to the I take case. the jacket we'll take off? off? We're dressed a little differently, my dear. <laughs> all right. So one of the things Sugar Ray told me, who's Sugar, the girl yeah. was my stand-in in Florida, is if you get your hands on your knees, which is a, and get your legs a little bit out like this, you have to get you out like this. What is the news department going to say <laughs> when I do this? All right. And now what? Kind of cup your back in. Cup my back in? Yes, there you go. And okay. tuck down a little bit. All right. And then just rock. <laughs> You're on your own, my dear. No, you have to take it time. <laughs> now you have to try one leg out. But it's also... See, part of it is loosening our bodies up so that we are not disconnected what are you doing from your here. Hands? Anything that feels good. Actually, if you put them on and you just feel yourself, if you were, if you think about it, how Listen, a lot if of girls I get to move. like this, it's going to be. So then, when you go out, it's a lot about it's just communicating that you feel good about yourself and touching yourself. Yeah, it's feeling like I feel good about myself. And and I think the feeling of yourself is what starts to open you up, so that we're not just. Yeah, it's not you just know, as if you're doing your... It starts to move. I feel Come very on. embarrassed. Well, you gotta try. Okay, That's, we try one. See, the embarrassment is the social okay. conditioning. All right. And That's about all, because there'll be nothing left to see Okay, in we'll go back and talk. That's <laughs> okay. wonderful. You did great. I feel so much freer. You did great. I feel so much freer. <laughs> it's a new me. But the truth is, you have to go and do it for yourself in front of when the mirror. When I go home. Yes. Did you ever imagine as a child that you would end up having this kind of a life, that you would end up being an actress, and did that occur to you? Um, I think that it's, I don't know if this is corny to say, but I feel that I am living that dream of the little girl. You went to different schools practically every, not just every year, every few months. How many different schools did you go to? Well, in truth, I can, I haven't even actually added them up, but I know that it was never less than two schools. And Never less. We moved every six months on an average. How do you fit in? How do you make friends? Well, I think it's the perfect training ground for an actor. 
you know, I would arrive at a new school, I would need to quickly assess the situation and see where I could fit in. And in a way, I learned very quickly to adopt different characteristics and to find a way to assimilate into... Whatever that was. Exactly, the environment that was in front of me. And also, I learned very early on how to detach from, from needing to hold on to people or to things. You left high school before you graduated. Yeah. Are you ever sorry? Definitely. I would say of anything that I feel like holds out over my head, just for myself, nobody else does it to me, it would not so much be that I didn't finish high school as much as I feel that I lost out on being taught how to learn. Let's talk about Bruce Willis. When you met Bruce, did you say, ah, oh, this is it? Um, I think having just ended a relationship where I almost got married to Emilio Estevez, yeah. um, and I, I was a little gun shy, and I didn't know Bruce at all. And yet, the little bit that I had heard, he was such the antithesis of that. He was so unbelievably charming and a gentleman and gentle and funny and was really just overwhelming to me, overwhelming, you know, that I just kept saying, I don't know, I don't know. Well, what did he do? What overwhelming? Five dozen roses? No, I mean, from the moment I walked in, you know, he said, can I buy you a drink? I said, I don't drink. And he said, well, how about a Perrier? And, you know, he just invited me to join them to see our friend perform. And when I arrived, you know, he had a Perrier waiting in the chair, and he was watching the door. And when I came out, he was, you know, wanting to try to remember my phone number so he could call me. And literally, the mo moment I got up the next morning, he called me. And we have been together ever since. Once and for all, and I hope it is for all, is the marriage okay? We have been great. I mean, we, of course, I'm not going to sit here and say we don't fight. We are human. We go up and down like all people. We are now moving into our ninth year of, hmm. of you know, marriage. And we go through the things that everyone goes through. But I can say to you very confidently, all of the reports have been extremely unfounded. Three little girls. Do you want to have more children? I would like more children. Want a boy? Well, it would be nice to have a boy. But if I did get a girl, just yeah. so everybody knows, yes, yes. I would be perfectly fine. Yeah. We're not going to read. The <laughs> more devastated. You're right. Yeah. No, my, my daughters are unbelievable they're in, they're incredible can you believe you have three every once in a while because i feel so much like i'm a kid yeah. i feel like i'm still such a kid and i look over at them and i'll say wow where did you come from how did and i end up saying, mommy mommy how did i end up with three girls yeah. uh, mommy yo is what i get called mommy yo have you come to terms with your childhood i have i really have and and i really learned in the last few years the difference between um, denial and detachment because to deny it means you that you still live with the anger and the resentment and I don't live with that I embrace and love my parents for everything that they gave me and even with the things that they weren't able to do for me I also have things from them because it's made me stronger it's made me reach for things that I wouldn't have reached for and and I love them I, 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 I love them for that to me I wanted to ask you you were paid twelve and a half million dollars for this film, Striptease. What does it mean to be the highest priced female in the business now? First of all, it is very meaningful in this business for women. It just so happens that it happened to me, but it doesn't matter that it was me. It could have been any one of us. I mean, it's nice that it was me, and it's a nice kind of ego boost, and it's flattering. But the fact is, the more important element to it, and the thing that makes me feel very proud, is that the fact that they were willing to step up and say that what I was going to con contribute to this film was worth what they wanted to pay me, means the perception of all women in Hollywood changed as of that moment, as did their salaries. And for that, I feel extremely, extremely proud. Some critics might say that you would not have gotten twelve and a half million dollars for doing striptease if you hadn't stripped. Well, I'll just help them to understand one thing, which is when they asked me to do this, they never asked me to be naked, and they never asked me to even show them if I could dance. And that I could have asked for a body double, and that per my contract, I am not requested to be naked in any way. It was of my own choice 
as it is with the women who do this actually for a living. Why was it your own choice to be naked? One, because I felt if I'm going to do it, then I really need to do it. And if I want to really take advantage of the opportunity to step into this world, to understand what their lives are, to try that on, then I need to really do it so that I can speak to you and really know that I have the confidence to say to you, this is my experience, not well, what I think the experience is. Was and it fun? This, I, yeah, it was incredible. Uh -huh. It was great. And you know what? I would have done it for less. <laughs> I would have.